guys. We're on the way to Unique Corals today. We placed an order with them a few weeks ago and we're ready to pick it up today. Since we live in Los Angeles, we can just drive over on our day off and visit the shop and see all the neat stuff they've got there. Uh, so instead of actually ordering coral like you would normally do on Unique Coral, if you go down to the bottom of the page, there's something called concierge. And we thought we would try it today. Uh, turns out the way it works is you give them sort of what you're looking for, um, the kind of coral, what, what you have in your tank now, uh, the conditions that you're going to be putting it into, and then they'll send back some options for things that are um, in stock, maybe not even on their website. Um, you might get like uh, new releases that are coming out that aren't, aren't available on their website yet or something that they just don't have a lot of. Um, or if you're looking for bigger colonies, they can do it that way as well. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to get some video inside Unique Rules. It's generally not open to the public. You um, would either have to be picking up an order or doing concierge or um, otherwise have contacted them before you show up. Um, so I don't know how much we'll be able to get in the store, but um, as much as we can, we'll show you what it looks like. So when you get to Unique Corals, it's a completely unmarked um, facility just on the side of the road here. Um, if you don't know the address, which you can get from Google Maps or their website, um, you're not going to really be able to find it all that well because there's no sign. Uh, really the only thing that you have to help you out with, with finding it is um, some random aquarium stuff that you might see in the parking lot here. So inside Unique Corals, there's a bunch of these raceways. Uh, they're pretty deep, but the coral is actually just in the top, maybe foot of the of the tanks. Um, I noticed they have some signs up that show water changes. Uh, they seem to do anywhere from 300 to 500 gallon water changes on these raceways um, at a time. And they're maybe 20 feet long. You can see here, uh, this one has a lot of stony coral in it. Um, they're separated mostly by types of coral and I, I think by care requirements. Um, there's some fish, a lot of tangs, things like that to clean it up. Lots of really big um, snails. Uh, this one had a lot of colonies at the end and then um, into frags of colonies which are just small pieces. So a lot of these colonies they use for propagation. They, uh, they grow them and then you break off pieces and grow the pieces and then they sell the pieces on their website. Um, so a lot of these uh, colonies are for sale, but a lot of them are also their own um, like mother colonies for fragments. And then another raceway that they have, um, I didn't show all of them, but I, I thought I'd walk through as many of, of them as I could. Um, you know, more frags, this one had large polyp stony coral. You can see here towards the end, um, a lot of uh, brain corals and things like that at the end, um, scolies. And large polyp stonies and more frags. All right, so it's the next day and everything has had a chance to acclimatize. And I thought that I would give a little last overview of all the things that we picked up. Um, so we have this Acanstria. Um, a hermit crab just bulldozed through here recently and aggravated it so it's kind of closed up. Um, but when it opens up again, I'll probably give it some shrimp. It uh, has had feeding tentacles out all day. And then we have two millipora, acropora and millipora, different kinds, but um, both the same species. And then next to those, we have a deep water acropora and acropora loconi. And you can see that the um, loconi has a much smoother skin on it than the millipora. This is a deep water coral. Um, we'll leave it towards the bottom half of the tank uh, when we go to place it. Then in the back we have a Acropora tenuous or tenuous. I'm not sure how to pronounce it completely correctly. I uh, don't speak Latin so forgive me. Um, this is uh, going to be in the upper half of the tank. Um, there's actually an Acropora crab inside it. You can't see it all that well, um, but uh, right in the middle there, you can you can sort of see the the crab's um, 
pincher. There's a few different kinds of acropora crab that you might get in your tank. Not all of them are good for your tank. Uh, this one, I think, is one of the better ones. Um, some of them will eat your fish uh, and just kind of hitchhike on acropora, and others um, actually live in the acropora and keep it clean and, and healthy. So I think this is one of those and not, uh, not the bad kind. Um, so I'm going to leave it in there. And then we have a gold torch coral in the back. Um, still not quite fully expanded, um, but looking nice. You can see it has nice um, golden tentacles with um, a contrasting sort of like grayish silver end to them. So looking forward to seeing that one um, open up more. So that's all of the larger colonies that we got. I've got a fish box or fish trap in the corner um, in case uh, we need to trap one of the fish out. Um, just getting them used to that. I'll, I'll do a video on trapping fish here in the future. Um, so then on the other side, we have all of the small frags that we got. We have a really nice uh, Oregon tort, an Acropora tortusa. It's, um, you can see a nice, really blue teal color. Much nicer in, in person than you're seeing on the, the film. And, and then two different Acropora. I'm not sure exactly what the green one is. Um, the other one is a Millipora, again, another Acropora Millipora. And then we have three other Acropora on the side. Um, I'm not 100% certain what the two in the back uh, species are. Um, they are more uh, sold as named corals. So um, having said that, I completely forget what the reddish brown one is. Um, the green yellow one is called um, a neon dandelion acropora. And then in the front um, is a echinata. It uh, looks white, but in person it's more um, light blue and white with light blue tips. Uh, that's another deep water acropora. So you can see again, um, these two are, are more um, sh shallow coral. And then uh, we have a, another deep water one for comparison. Moving on, we have a different genus. We have Montipora instead. Um, Montipora can grow to look exactly like acropora. Um, but a lot of them also grow encrusting like this, and so we have two different kinds. Um, you can see we have a green with sort of bluish purple polyps, one that's sort of undulating, and then the other form is much smoother, and this is called a rainbow um, montipora. You can see where it gets its name from all the different colors in the polyps. I'll try to zoom in so you can see those a little better. Um, you can see there's green and red and orange and just all sorts of different polyps in there. And then we also have two different fevia, which are large polyp stony corals. Um, I particularly like the colors of them. Um, this one has really nice red, bright, red, bright red around the edges where it's growing. Um, can't see it too well on the film. Um, one of the problems with, with filming coral is that what it looks like in person rarely is what it looks like on film, um, so I apologize. Um, the Ganapora here at the end, the bright red one though, um, does actually look like that on film and in person. Um, so that's a good representation of what a Ganapora will look like. Um, and then we have a Blastomusa and, um, and one that I just completely always forget the name of, um, so I'll, I'll add an annotation of that. Um, again, both um, large polyp stony corals. So that's a good overview of what we got there for the day. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.